Okay. Um, hello, my name is Richard Evans. I'm an electronics engineer at the NASA Glenn Research Center in Cleveland, Ohio, but uh, I work at a remote um, test site in Sandusky, Ohio. Um, and I've been uh, working with MediaWiki for a number of years. Uh, and uh, lately we've been trying to migrate some of our knowledge management processes from uh, traditional styles that I think you guys might recognize, um, file shares, um, office documents, things like that, into the, uh, into the wiki environment. Um, and let's see. What talk with you guys about today is uh, our, my experiences in trying to uh, get document approval uh, incorporated into our document development. So I was thinking about the right way to approach this. Um, this is an enterprise media wiki conference. I think the one thing that we all have in common is, is that we're developing documents, plans, uh, procedures, the, the, all of the guiding documents that govern our enterprise processes. Um, one of the things that nobody wants is for these uh, documents to be uh, uncontrolled. And so version control for these types of things is, is critical. Um, so when we begin with the document development process, uh, this, is a, this is a common place I, I hope we all uh, recognize. There's a, there's, a, there's a product that we want to develop. Uh, we pick some, some, some people to be in charge of its development. Uh, and at the end of that process, it's published to a common access point, and all of the users will then benefit from the, uh, from the developed document. Uh, this is what it's supposed to look like. This is how we talk about it. But anybody who's uh, been doing this for a number of years knows that uh, things get really messy sometimes uh, when the documents are being emailed, and at the end of that process, there's a complicated uh, stage where before it finally goes into a user access portal, uh, the users pretty much have not had insight into this. And so this is the chart that I love to show people. This is the argument for why we want to move to a, uh, to a more honest uh, document development model. As all of us are MediaWiki fans and supporters, um, the, the wiki article is central and there's a corresponding talk page that goes with it. Uh, the idea is, is that the, the users are stakeholders. They can see the development of the document. The changes, uh, the, the, the document editors are directly interacting with the document. And, uh, and at the end of that process, and this is where my, my talk sort of begins, at the end of that process is a, is a revision that ultimately we want to get it archived. And so the question is, um, can, we eliminate, can we eliminate the part where we take the finished product and put it into, a, uh, into some kind of a... Um, an access store, uh, can we eliminate that and work entirely out of the wiki? Um, and some smart user might say, well, but how do we know if, if the document is always, if it's developed in the wiki and it's used in the wiki, then the users might say, how do I know that the one that I'm looking at is the correct one? Um, so this is the introduction. This talk could also be an advertisement for uh, the approved revisions extension. So. Um, for those that have approved revisions installed on their system, uh, in, this is a page that we're all familiar with. It's the history of, a, of an article. So I've created a generic article, uh, page X, and I've got three revisions from, from the time that it was originally created. And what the approved revisions allows you to do is pick a particular revision anywhere in the document development and set that as the, as the approved revision. And, uh, and if you do that, um, then uh, you get this little, uh, there's the potential to have this little notification at the top that would tell you uh, that what you're viewing as the end user is the latest revision of the page, and it has, and this one currently has no approved revision. Uh, but that's sort of the text that you get. Um, so, The problem we have with this at this point is that the, the extension works wonderfully well, but, um, but my experience with my users is, is that that little, little bit of text at the top is not sufficient to really let them know uh, that this is truly the article that they want to be using for whatever the purpose is, whether it's a procedure or a plan. So uh, in the NASA world, um, we have some requirements for how we do the document control. 
and I want to get to showing you how I've, how I've um, implemented this. But basically, um, we'd like to add a footer at the bottom of the, uh, of the page that would make it crystal clear uh, which version of the document that the user is, is looking at. So we have some other extensions that we're going to bring into play. Uh, Semantic Media Wiki is, is the big one. Uh, Semantic Extra Special Properties, uh, and, and I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, the header footer extension, and then we've got to do a little bit of JavaScript in, uh, in the common.js page. So header and footer does exactly what it says. You install this extension, and it gives you the ability to, per namespace, uh, create a template header and a template footer. For our purposes, we're going to be focusing on the footer. Um, Semantic Media Wiki, as everyone knows, allows you to do these wonderful inline queries. Uh, you can get all kinds of results in all kinds of ways, and you can incorporate them into your templates and, uh, and, have, uh, and have presentation elements that do uh, really subtle but helpful things. Uh, the Semantic Extra Special Properties um, is a wonderful extension that allows you to take the core page attributes, things like who created the page, um, who are, who are the contributors of the page? Um, when was it last modified? When was it created? These are, these are core attributes that are built into MediaWiki. Uh, every page has these attributes, but they're not natively known to semantic MediaWiki. So the semantic extra special properties um, extension takes these, uh, these intrinsic page properties and makes them semantically queryable. Um, so when we run semantic extra special properties with the approved revisions extension, uh, we have the ability to now include the approved revision index, uh, who approved it, what the approval date was, and uh, what the current status of the article is. Is it approved or not? These are now uh, semantic properties that I can write inline queries and ask. Um, so this allows me to build a template for, my, for the footer of every page. And, um, and so in, inside the template code, and I won't show you all the gory details of the template co code for this footer, um, is the basic information that every user should know at a glance when they call this page up. So for example, on the left, um, it's sort of who the document owner is. This is a NASA page. Uh, you get the, the page name in, in clear text. You've got a direct link. Um, and there is a section here that shows the status of the page. Is it approved? Is it for internal? If I'm set, I, and I sort of defined it as if the page is not approved, then it's for internal use only by the authors and contributors. And, um, and then there's the approver there. Uh, the section on the far right tells you when the page was last updated. Uh, and I even had a little bit of fun writing the code that calculates the number of seconds elapsed since, um, since it was last updated and tries to decide whether or not uh, displaying it in seconds, minutes, hours, uh, weeks, months, years is the right way to go. Um, but ultimately, uh, from this one footer that appears on every page, we get the essential details, including uh, a section in the middle that I've captured, which is... <laughs> not only what the latest revision ID is, but also what the approved revision ID is, um, as well as the number of edits. But at the top, what I've highlighted in yellow is the revision that's being viewed. And I struggled with this for a while because I wanted very badly um, to be able to do something, uh, to have the system smart enough that when somebody is looking at an obsolete version of the page, that, uh, that something would flag the user and say, you know, attention, danger, you are looking at an obsolete page. Um, and so it was tough to do that because you can't query the revision ID that the user is currently viewing. However, um, that the, when, if anybody has ever gone to the view history and they've done some comparisons, you know that there's the old ID and, the, and the, the, there's the ID information in the URL, so I thought that information has to be available, and sure enough, some wonderful support from the MediaWiki um, online folks. Um, there is a JavaScript element, and I don't know that I'll say this right, but it's the, uh, it's the global variable WG revision ID, 
uh, is, is the revision ID that the, that the user is currently looking at in their browser. So if you go to uh, your common.js MediaWiki page, you can implement a little bit of JavaScript that will grab that value and force it into, uh, into an HTML tag that I have embedded into this footer. So when any page is called up, not only do they get uh, the revision information on what the latest is, as well as what the approved revision is, but it also is intelligent enough to see what revision they're currently looking at. And so I can do some additional JavaScript things where I can, I can, I can put a, a big uh, uh, banner over top the whole page that says, you know, do not use this for any official use. And that's proven to be extremely important. Um, okay, so my, my user uh, at the beginning of the story said, well, how do we know which revision is approved? And so for all the uh, steps that I've just described, my answer is, well, you just look at the very informative banner on every page and you can't go wrong. Uh, and so that's the end of the first chapter of the story. Um, so if, if we only ever had one approver per page, we'd be done. Um, but in an enterprise environment, there's often multiple stakeholders. And when you're developing a document, there's almost always a signatory page at the front. And that signatory page has the, uh, you know, the, the buy-in from the, from the managers, the buy-in from uh, the safety folks, the buy-in from the technical experts. And so at the end of this long uh, document process, well, and let me back up a little bit, uh, so in this model, right, the four people here that I'm showing as the developers of the document would be the signatories. So it's not enough that one person approves the page and we move forward. We need, we'd love to have a way of keeping track of who the approvers were. So here we create the document, here we do the development. This is the part that I showed you earlier. We ask the question, is it ready for signing? And if it is, then the first step in, in before we sign it is to validate the signatures, uh, the, the signatories. We need to make sure that we have the right people um, signing this document. So the idea then is, is that once, once we know who we want signing this document, we then have to have the choice of signatories approved. And then once the choice of signatories is approved, we go get the signatures. And once the signatures are in place, the document is live, and then it can finish the rest of its life cycle. Um, I don't have time to go into the details, but uh, there is a, a portion of this where I set a review cycle. Uh, and if the page, once the page ages beyond the review cycle, say a year, then it would go back and uh, want to be revalidated. And uh, I, I won't have time to go into that. So this is our workflow for controlled documents. Um, and and so I, won't, I, I, I don't want to read this whole thing to you, but the idea is, is that uh, the, the document on the right is the kind of thing that we're producing. And what winds up happening is, is that we, we print this signatory page out, we take it around, we gather signatures, we scan it in, we turn it into a PDF file, and then we have to put it somewhere. And so now we're right back at the beginning where um, we had this wonderful approved revisions extension, uh, but, it, but it doesn't meet this need. And so we still have to figure out how to do digital signatures. And so um, I will feel foolish if somebody tells me that there is a VeriSign feature built in and this is a core capability that I've overlooked, but I don't think it is. Um, so I began to brainstorm and think, well, is there some really clever way with all the tools that we have available to Semantic uh, MediaWiki is there a way that I can bring more extensions into this picture and, and, and provide the solution of multiple digital signatures um, for a given document? And so I think I've done it. Um, basically, I want to create a semantic class. And a class, as everybody knows, is uh, a template, a form, and a category that work together to produce a semantic structure of page content and so I'm creating um, a semantic structure called a controlled document. And so there's a form that you can, there's a button you can click on that produces this form. And what I've tried to do here is on the left is I'm just capturing uh, the essential information. Uh, the document is being developed, what the basic purpose of the document is, 
Here's the review cycle I mentioned. Uh, and then here's just some arbitrary comments that help me figure out signatories. On the right-hand side, um, I've done a semantic query of all the users um, in, my, in my system. And, uh, and one of the things that I've done is all my user pages have a, uh, have, are, have a semantic class where a, when, they, when they register with the site or when they visit the site, uh, from the network, they get all of the organizational information is known to them in a semantic way. So, um, so this, uh, this semantic query of users generates a, uh, a multiple checkbox uh, list, and I can just come over here and check the, uh, the, the people that I want to be the signatories of this document. Um, so far, when I click Save on this, all I'm going to get is a, uh, is a semantic field that has multiple um, comma-separated values of users. What does it look like? So the template for this controlled document, um, it automatically creates a, uh, a, a page name, so you didn't have to supply the page name. Uh, the NASA GRC H000 is pulled out of, uh, out of my user information, and so if another user with, with, uh, with, with different organizational credentials were to use the same form, uh, the page would be named according to their organization, and this is number four in the list, and that number is auto-numbered from, uh, from, from page forms. So in this case, I've used, uh, I've used a header banner, and what I'm trying to communicate to the user is, this is sort of the, uh, the high-level stuff that we, that we populated in the left side of the form, shows up here, but each one of those um, users that I selected then automatically uh, becomes a signatory uh, in the table. And there's some logic in there that if the, if the page for the signatory doesn't exist, then it creates the little uh, the form button to automatically create this thing. So once I hit save on this new controlled document, this is the page that I see. My signatories are listed. You can see that it's not signed yet and there's no action. And so it's sort of up to me to sort of create um, the signatory class. And so the next step here is um, to create the second semantic structure. The second semantic structure is a controlled document required signatory. Um, I won't say that three times. Um, but basically, we, we go to special pages, we create a new class, it's called uh, the required signatory, and basically, at this point, the only thing that we want to get in this class from the user is the signatory role or title. And so, oftentimes, people are asked to be a signatory on a document for a specific reason that may not be directly, uh, may not map directly to their job title. So this is an opportunity to say who they are in reference to, to signing the document. So that's really it. Um, you, you create the controlled document class, you pick your signatories, that automatically creates a table. For each line item in the table, you create a required signatory page. The required signatory page is smart enough to reference back to the controlled document that generated it. Um, you, you add the, uh, the role information, and, uh, and then this is what the rest of the page looks like. And so, ultimately, this one, I want this to be hidden from the user, but I, I revealed it um, in, my, in my template so that I could do some screenshots and show you guys what's going on. But basically, the first box, uh, remember, this is the semantic information that is available in the signatory class. And the first box is specific to the signatory page. So you have some basic information, name, role, title, comment. But then the next four, or specifically the signatory required and the signatory approver is, the required is automatically calculated based on, uh, based on who the signatory is supposed to be according to the checkbox. And then what matters in terms, what we're trying to get here is, uh, is for validity. Um, so this last line, signatory approver is the required approver. All this is where, where it says bad right there, what that means is, is that it looked at, 
It looked at the required signatory, the, the, the name that it wanted to see as the approver, and it looked at who the actual approver is, and in this case, it's nobody yet. And so it calculates, wait a second, right? Not only, you know, so, so the, the, uh, 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 the signatory approver is not who it needs to be, so therefore, I get a flag that's bad. Uh, we do the exact same thing uh, for, the, for the applicable document. So this is the signatory validation, and then this is in the same template for the signatory validation, is, is asking the question, is the parent document validated? And so this says, if, if I'm the author of the controlled document, the one that we're all editing and making perfect, if I'm the author of that, then that would make me the master approver. And so if somebody else comes in and approves it under me, right, then it's gonna cause this logic to be bad, right? So in order for the overall signature validation to be correct, the master document has to be approved by the, by the person who created, the, by the person who's supposed to approve it. The signatory has to be approved by the person who's supposed to approve it. And I'm also calculating the date that they were approved, and I'm turning that into a Unix timecode, and I'm calculating the difference. And so if the signatory signs before the master document is signed, it's invalid. So in order to get our, our final goal is the, is the basic Boolean question, is, a va is, this, is this a valid signatory? The, uh, there's all these internal checks on the template, and if at the end of that whole process, uh, everything works out, then is a valid signatory goes from bad to good, and we wind up with um, the template updates here, and the, uh, the, the signature page automatically populates on the article. And so, in conclusion, uh, by pulling together uh, standard media wiki with, uh, with a lot of the extensions listed there and some that I'm sure I forgot, um, we've found a way to, to, do, um, to make every page's revision status known with a footer at the bottom, uh, including the revision that they're, that they're currently looking at, as well as uh, a, a mechanism, an appliance uh, for for allowing multiple signatories to come together and co-approve a single page. And um, this is still uh, sort of in the Rev 1 stage and uh, I'm looking to make it better over time, but uh, I think all the pieces are there and I'd be very interested if anyone knows of another way to do this within MediaWiki. Um, and I'd be interested to know um, yeah, what your experiences are with, uh, with signing documents. Okay, uh, so that's, any questions? I'm just wondering, in the, in the main page that lists the different signatories required, can somebody change that? Like reduce the number of people and then it becomes? So that's, um, that's, a, that's a great question and that's why when we go back, um, so you're saying anyone can come along and update this, right? That's why this page has to be the master approver first. So when we go to the flow, um, the person who is maintaining that list has to approve that list and lock it in. And, once the, and so that list of signatories is, is part of an approved revision of the master document, and it can't be changed after that without invalidating the approval. Um, does that make sense? I think it makes sense. So you're basically checking who modified the page last. No, I'm checking. I'm checking to make sure that the person who the person who has approved the page right. is the person who is who had created the page. If the page approver is not the page creator, you'll never get valid signatures down the road. So the controlled document has to be approved first by, by the creator of the page. And there's no way to change that. I can't go in and fake out the system and, uh, and, and make it so that somebody else, you know, I can't change the, uh, the creator of a page, nor can I change who the approver is. I mean, I can become the approver, but I invalidate who the approver, who, who, you know, I, I always take that on. 
And so if, if, I am the, if I validate, if I approve the master controlled document, which includes the list of required signatories, and then you come along, well, and you come along and, um, and approve it to a different revision, then that breaks the whole signature chain. Yeah. And everything has to be revalidated. All the signatures have to be regathered. I, I might have missed something, but um, why didn't you use the revision ID magic word instead of getting the JavaScript global? So my understanding is, is that the magic word only gives you, uh, it returns the latest version, not the one you're viewing. And so I, I, I went down that because I think the variables are named, um, it's a little confusing how they're named. And, uh, and so then I started asking in the forums, well, you know, why can't I have a magic word that tells me what revision ID the, view, the user is viewing? And the answer was, that would totally break the caching system. Right, so the idea is that there is no magic word that's going to tell you what, what version ID you're currently looking at. There is a magic word that will always tell you what the approved revision is. I'm sorry, there's a magic word that will always tell you what the latest ID is, but not the one you're looking at. Oh, I'm, so that, let's talk. Thank you, this is pretty amazing. Um, how much effort was it for you to actually develop that? Um, lots of, mis lots of like, uh, attempts uh, to, to get the logic. So the, the, what I tried to do was, without coding anything, I just step back and say, what data is available to me at any given moment? And is, is there enough of the right information that I could make a decision? And if I can make the decision on the available data, then I can program it to do so. Um, well, so I've been ruminating about it for, um, for a few weeks. Um, and the actual time spent coding it is, is probably about a week. Um, and a lot of that is, you know, at the end of a process, you look back and say, oh, well, if I'd have just done it that way to begin with, it would have been an afternoon, right? <laughs> so there's not a lot of code. Um, there's really only two forms, two templates, um, and, and some JavaScript, uh, and, and the underlying extensions. So again, um, if there is some kind of a VeriSign tool out there, uh, I would love to know about it. I, I don't think this is necessarily the long-term solution, but I think uh, in my organization, uh, we find that gather, our business processes require us to gather an awful lot of signatures, and there's an awful lot of PDF scans of signature pages that are being managed independently of the actual um, content uh, documents. And so it is an organizational task to try to keep all those signatory pages aligned uh, manually with all these developed documents. So bringing this online um, is, uh, you know, ushers us into that, into an era where we can start to do away with, with, um, with physical signatures. And again, uh, something I didn't draw a lot of attention to is that this all hinges on the integrity of your user authentication and uh, authorization. So uh, I do have the luxury that when a user shows up at my site, uh, they have been pre-authorized by an external identity provider for, for the agency, and uh, there is a trust relationship that my application, that my MediaWiki installation has with my users. When they show up at my door, their credentials are good, and I know who they are. So who, who approves a page? Um, and, and, uh, and who creates a page are very reliable things that are, that are auditably, that are auditable back to real people. Okay, we're going to have one last question while, while Nicholas gets set up and if anybody else wants to ask rich questions, okay. which I see there are a few at next break. Yeah, thanks very much for the presentation. Really enjoyed it because it's similar to what we're trying to do at the moment with all our policies. Let's put them on the wiki. The coding is actually quite easy, relatively. What we've found is actually getting the stakeholders' involvement and getting the, the information onto the wiki in the first place. Yeah. Uh, and one other thing, uh, 
you spoke about the generation of the document and the generation of the policies. We're looking at collecting the evidence to show compliance with those policies and contain that within the wiki. And I'm just wondering if you've looked to that as well. Uh, we have. That would be the topic of, a, of another exciting talk. I would welcome, I'd, I'd, I'd love to come back and give. Um, we're in the middle of a, of a, uh, of a, of a process safety management um, assessment. You know, our organization from OSHA compliance has to have a level of uh, planning and, uh, and the uh, traceability, the, the, the ability to prove that we, that we are implementing the plan and, uh, and all of that's being tied into this system. Uh, thank you. Thank you all. <laughs>